We've got this piece sanded almost down to the right thickness. It won't quite go in there yet, and that's fine. We just want to get it real close first. And, and we've also squared it off, flattened it off one edge, and squared this end up, and then we've rounded this over. Now we take that rounded over part, and we put it up to the round over here on this slot, and we get it real tight there. And then once we get that, we can kind of judge our length. And I'm still going to cut it a hair long because it's always easier to take some off than it is to add some on. So I'm just going to cut it about right here. I'm going to leave just a little bit of that pencil mark and cut that off. camera went ahead and got this uh, thinned down and fit in here and it, it's perfect so you can see you can pick up the whole instrument by the saddle it won't come out there's no play at all this way at all none so it's perfect but yet it's not too crazy tight you can lift it out of there fairly good and I could probably lift it out of there with my fingers if they weren't so sore anyway you can see there that it, it comes right out we're not forcing it into place we can just push it right into place like that without any extra you know leverage or anything that's exactly how you want them to fit you don't want them to fit loose and you don't want them to fit crazy tight I think because we have that fitting so well I'm just going to go ahead and, and draw an imaginary um, curl on this and um, matter of fact that little saddle we used would probably be pretty close to right. I found the saddle that we actually did our uh, intonation step with and I'm just using that as a height uh, gauge because if you remember right we had the height pretty close to right here it, if anything it was a hair low so by drawing the pencil mark on here and we will for sure leave the whole pencil mark and maybe a little bit more just to be play it safe but we should that should give us a real close setup right off the bat that'll give you some idea and then that also gives you some idea how much you know that we have uh, about half of that is down inside the uh, instrument so uh, about half of that's revealed and about half of it's down and that's a good ratio Kim and I are going to make a nut for this uh, bazooki I uh, can't recall ever making a nut for a bazooki, but I probably have. <laughs> I've done so many things I just forget about it, to be honest. But anyway, uh, it's mostly done by hand. Now, I've already, uh, before Kim got here this morning, I already made a, a blank that fits this slot is perfect, you know. The old one was 188 thousandths. Uh, thick and guess how thick this one is 188 thousandths exactly so it fits the slot just perfect in fact if you uh, turn it over it's not going to fall out it's how that's how perfect it fits so the next thing though is to start to shape it to the instrument and there's a lot to that in fact maybe the first thing I mean it really doesn't matter the order of operations on this can go in a, a couple of different directions but one of them you eventually have to cut it to the length and to the shape of the the head and the neck and and I just hold it there tight with my thumb and turn it over and you know take the smallest lead pencil I have here and of course on camera it's got to say it's time for a new piece of lead trace it as tightly as you can trace it and you trace it on both edges it's not sitting down in the bottom very well. There's a problem, so we'll have to look at that. In hindsight, I should have cleaned this out before I even made this, because perhaps the original one wasn't tight enough, and because there is quite a bit of glue here. So we may end up making another one of these anyway. Sometimes you get it in the right order, sometimes you don't. I started on that nut first thing this morning to try to get a head start, and uh, didn't think about cleaning this out. So what I'm doing is just taking a a very sharp um, chisel and I'm just scraping the end of that to get the glue off because there's just clumped up glue there quite a bit of it actually now I will tell you you don't want to cut anything off the end of your fingerboard you don't want to do that but you definitely want it clean and now that I look at this it looks like someone has put a shim in between 
the peg head veneer and the saddle. Did you notice this, Kim? It looks to me like 99% oh, yeah, yeah. sure someone's put a shim in there between between the saddle and, see, there it is. So, you know, we'll probably make a new nut and make it fit the whole spot there. What do you propose that was done for? The nut was made a little too thin yeah. and they just went, let's just shim it? Right. That's the way things are done most of the time. Why make a new nut when you can shim? <laughs> well, true. And, you know, and I've already said, the nut is what takes the most time. Yeah. You know, I mean, it just takes the most time. There, it, there's nothing that takes more time in the setup than making a new nut. You know, human nature, as it is, what are you going to do? You know, you take the shortcut. I typically don't take the shortcut because I'm a glutton for punishment. Yeah, there's a lot of junk in there. There is a whole lot of junk in this. Now, I'm not quite sure. Actually, I think here we've got a combination of things. It kind of looks like the peghead veneer comes under this here, but here it's been cut too deep, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's that. I have a square file here, and I'm just going to see what we can do with that and clean this up and get it as perfect as we can get it. Again, I, you know, I hope no one takes this like I'm picking on the last guy that did this. It's, it, it's, it's just very common to see these things. I mean, it's very common. It's not like he's the only person that ever did something like this, whoever did it. All those things typically catch up to you somewhere, you know? You know? And so for me, it's just better to get it clean and square and fresh and, and make the appropriate nut and then you're done, you know? And it'll last virtually forever when you do it the right way, 100%, you know? The, the trick of this now is getting this level because that's really deep there for some reason. I don't know why that's so deep. But, you know, that's why I, when I looked at it, when I put my blank in there, it was sitting flat on the one side. It's not sitting flat on the other side. See, it's sitting flat there. Yeah, flat. And it's not there. You know, you can still see under it. It's better because I've cleaned most of it out, but yeah, but it's still not quite there. I'm trying to hold it, you know, level, uh, not let it come down here like yeah. this, you yeah, know. Totally. I'm trying to just keep it by eye as level as I can keep it, and that's all you got, you know. There's really no other way to do it. On my last day on earth, when my last words will be heard, I want you there to hear the story I will tell. Before my spirit rises high above the white cloud-filled sky, please be there to hear my last words on earth. So many people discount what your eye can tell you. Uh, you know, they, they feel like they have to measure everything. They feel like they have to check a straight edge on everything. And boy, I'll tell you what, your eye, if you develop your eye, it's just about better than any straight edge or anything else like that. So I know I'm not getting this in camera very well, but what I'm actually doing is I'm holding this up and I'm looking through the channel like this and if you get it just right you can you can tell if you've got anything uh, out of out of a joint we still are real deep on this one end I don't know how that ever happened you know that you can tell there's glue in there and everything else so it's been that way a long time but um, now where it gets critical or where where you do really need to use did the calipers stay over there again? Or here they are. Yep, there it is. Okay, the calipers were on my desk this time. Anyway, I get it down here and I measure that uh, on this side now. I'm only measuring 208 or 209. On this side, I'm measuring 240. Wow, that's quite different. Well, here we go. I, I can see what the difference is. Down below, it slopes in like this. At the top of the veneer, it's wider. So there's the difference. 230, 240. So 
we're not terribly off um, on the veneer. I just have to be very careful how I measure it. So this, this is wider on the veneer than this is. If we are careful here, we can change that and get it pretty equal. We're getting pretty close. Mm -hmm. We're not perfect, but we're getting pretty close. Two, 230 roughly and to, well, it depends on how you measure it. It, it really can give you, it can lie to you. You gotta be really careful on these things. 38, 240 that way, 230. So, you know, you're, when you, you think that's a lot, it's not a lot, 10 thousandths of an inch. To me, it's significant, but it's not, it's not crazy different. You know, your eye would barely see it. And, and the only reason that it comes into play is when you try to fit something in here perfectly, it won't fit perfectly, you know. Ten thousands will keep a fit from happening easily. My last words on earth will be spoke with you in mind. And I'll talk about a good life, how your life enriched mine. Most of all, I want to say you've been good to me. I hope you're there to hear my last words on earth. The nut that was on here, and I don't know where it went now, I think it's over on the bandsaw. I'm pretty sure it was cut square, almost square, but I don't think that square is going to really work on this. It really needs to be a slight angle according to that, but now that's the bad side too. On that side it fits pretty good. Mm -hmm. Well, bummer. We just may have to fill it. I don't know what else to do other than just to keep working on it. Just about through it now. That's good. I kind of want to get through that veneer because most of the time they're not set on the veneer anyway. Most of the time they're set right on the neck. Not that it really matters as long as it's equal and perfect. But most of the time they're set like we're setting this one anyway. times and the sand before I leave you on this earth you gotta hear my last words please be there to hear my last words on earth you know I don't know how much of that I got on video but because it's hard to do this and keep the camera pointed in the right place but we have cleaned it out all the way down to bare wood, as you can see. And we have squared it up, and we've got the slot up really close to the same width across, where it was off by more than 10 thousandths before. Um, it's pretty close now. It's within a couple thousandths. Typically, a couple thousandths you can get away with. It looks pretty good to me, but we're going to have to make a new nut now. Looks like... Roughly 240 thousandths is what we're going to have to make. That measures about the same now. I'm going to say around 240 is where we're going to shoot for to begin with, and then we'll go from there. So we'll make a nut blank and we'll come back and show you the next step. Well, a little bit off of camera work there, but we've got this thing fitting uh, like a, a bull's butt at fly time. It's, it's just that tight. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it, you know, it's not going to come out of there, and it's tied all the way across the veneer. It's tied all the way across here. Uh, to be perfectly truthful, there's a little bit of an air gap here. It's about a thousandth of an inch or something in that neighborhood, uh, right here. And and that was done a long time ago. Somebody got happy with a file or something, and it just isn't ever going to match up perfectly there uh, without cutting some off the end of the fingerboard. And I'm not willing to do that. Anyway, we're going to leave that as it is. Um, it's uh, about as good as we can make it, I think. 
So now we're back to where we were a little while ago when we're going to draw the length of this on here. Ah, it's so tight, in fact, that it, it's like it grew in there now. It won't come out. <laughs> so you can see those lines there. And what we do is we just go over to our sander and we just touch that in there until the line just disappears. As soon as the line disappears, you're done. And same way on this side. And it, you know, we kind of watch both lines and as soon as they disappear, you're finished. You want to stop right there. Okay, so we've got the ends sitting really flush. They're, they're really good. What we need to do now is uh, mark the height. You can kind of use a, a real sharp pencil and, and kind of do that, but most generally that's gonna leave it too tall. Um, but at least it kind of gives you an arc. We've done that already, you can see an arc there. So what I do now is I move over to a vise and I do most of the rest of it by hand. So we got our little vise here, set this up. Well, I'm, the line is on my side, and I can I can look at that line and and just take a, a rough file like this and just start knocking it down. Now I can do this at a sander too, by the way, and sometimes I do. We don't have far to go here, so I'm just going to do it by hand. Now that I say that because I know where that that line's going to be high. I think I will go over to our sander and I'll just take it and just kind of do this, and when I get the line just disappearing, then we'll uh, bring it back over here and do some hand fitting and, and do the rest by hand. So I've just roughed it and, and I knew and I told him that it was going to still be way tall, but I just kind of roughed it out to that pencil mark. What I also do now is I'll take a fine pencil and I'll, and I'll actually mark the fingerboard on here. Now just from experience, I know you know about how much I need to leave there and um, then I'll just go over there and I'll just take off a little bit more you know we're, we're not too far away from it now so all we need to do is just go over to the sander and just sand off a little bit more of this top and make sure we don't get down where we're threatening anywhere close to that line you know because that line is the top of the fingerboard here okay I've knocked it down and now I'm gonna round off the front of this. This is the part that goes down to the peg head. And I'm just putting, again, a, a round over by eye on this. And again, it's whatever you think looks good. You know, if you, if you want, it doesn't have to be round. If you want it straight as an angle, you could do that. You know, it's just whatever you like. Me, I like rounded, roundness and, and smooth. I don't like angles and square and things that are gonna scratch you, cut you, you know, that kind of thing. Okay, so that's pretty good on the roundness there. We'll put it back in here. You know, I'm sure we're still way high. You can look at it and see that it's gonna be pretty high. That's okay. You can file this off after you get it glued in here, after you do that, you can file this off really easy. No problem at all. The only thing I'm looking at now is, the, is this front edge down here to see if I think I've got it down as far as I want it because I don't want to file down there too much after I get it on here. It doesn't look too bad, but I might take that down just a little bit more. This nut fits so well, you could glue it in or you don't have to if you don't want to. Now, typically I do. I would, uh, you could actually probably live with this one not glued in. But I, I typically use some kind of glue like this Super Fatic or my um, canopy glue. And I just put a dot or two of that on there and that just kind of holds you in place. And I think we're ready to do that because the rest of it I think we can do right on the mandolin now or on the... Bazooki. Bazooki. Yeah, I know a lot more about bazookas than bazookies. <laughs> and what I know about bazookas, you could put in a thimble. Okay, so we'll just put a little drop like that on there and stick it down in the hole. Trying to make sure I'm getting the ends pretty even. And again, this is another one of those water soluble glues, which is nice because you can just clean it up. I'm just pushing down to make sure it's seated all the way down and I believe it is okay now what we need is some sort of a, a guide to decide where to put the strings back now 
if you liked the old one, then that's our guide. If you don't like the old one, then we need to know what the difference is and we need to uh, change it. So th again, and everybody's different on this. You know, some people really like their strings close together. Some people like them a little further apart. Me, I'm kind of in the middle there somewhere. I don't like them super close because they'll buzz. But on the other hand, I don't want them very far apart either. We have penciled on here the string grooves and one unique thing about this is that one, you know, like for instance, the top pair of strings, one groove is going to be, what did you say, about what, about how many thousands approximately? Like 46. Like 46 and the other one's going to be quite 13. a bit less. Like 13. So we, it's different than a mandolin where I would make them both the same size. So we've got like a large one and a small one. And so we got to take that into account as we go across here. So, uh, I'll try to take that into account. You know, I typically start my groove with a, with a saw. Uh, I don't end it with necessarily with the saw anymore. I used to. I used to do the whole thing with the saw. Because if you just rock your saw and use it like a file, it works and makes a nice groove. And the thing about it is it's super accurate. I can get it exactly where I want it. Where a file in, they'll skid this way, so they'll skid that way, you know. If you just take your time with this, you can get exact results. At least, uh, at least it gets you started right. And then you can go anywhere you want to with it. We're just putting some very light marks in here right now. The other thing that I always say about uh, these slots is I don't want them tight. I know a lot of people do, but I don't want them tight. There's all kinds of reasons I don't want them tight. Um, often when you make them tight, they're not sitting on the bottom of the groove. They're sitting up on, you know, up on the edges of the groove. They, uh, if, you, if you make them tight, uh, they can vibrate on the uh, inside edge you, if, you, if it happens to be sitting in the middle there somewhere. You know, I like to make them loose, uh, it, and I don't mean like crazy loose. I just mean I want, them, I want the slot a couple thousands bigger than the string. And then that way you have no trouble at all. The string hits the bottom of the groove like it should. Putting the grooves in here now where we can see them and make sure that by eye they look okay before we start really putting them in here. Take a look at that and see what you think. If you think it looks symmetrical and even. The only thing I'm seeing, it looks like there could be a bigger gap yeah, here. than here and here. Yeah. I'm wondering that too. This looks bigger in this gap here. Mm-hmm. Than that there. I mean. This this gap looks slightly bigger maybe than this one, do you think? Yeah, I think. Let's uh let's get the calipers out again. Are they back in the box? I don't think so. Uh, it's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing where they go. I never feel like I get up that much, but apparently I do. Alright, so let's just try to get real specific here. That's 218. And this one is a little wider. This is 240. So it seems like this string needs to come, this yeah. A string needs to come this way. Is what? Well, uh, I think I think we've proven here that this is a smaller gap. Than oh, this oh, is sure, for yeah. sure. So yeah. I think I'm going to move these that way a gotcha. teeny bit gotcha. first. Gotcha. First. Yeah. And then we'll move the other one. kind of give myself an idea of 414. So like if you go to these two outside edges, you know, two outside, mm -hmm. it's just like that. So we're in the, you know, that ballpark. And if we go to these two outsides, we're in that ballpark. Mm -hmm. So we're pretty close. You know, it's really hard, you know, to make them anything perfect when you get down to the thousands of an inch. I think we'll go to the other files here and see how that looks. Um, you said this first one's like. Let me double. Oh, just double check. That's yeah. Good. So the two fattest ones are a 45 and a 30. Okay. All right. I've got a 50 here, and yep. that's five thousandths bigger. And yep. in my book, that's just about right. Five thousandths seems like a lot. It's the thickness of a hair. So you know you're not dealing with a lot there. Try that. Now, what did you say the next one was? 30. A 30? Yeah. No, oh, the next big one, you mean? Yeah. Okay, we got a 35. 
By the way, I notice all these little marks here. Somebody else did those. You understand? Mm -hmm. That's that was, that's, that's from doing this. That, that's me. Oh, was that you? <laughs> okay. Well, I just want you, you know I don't want any, I don't want any of you people saying I did that because I didn't do that. The idea on filing a nut is always keep this file at the exact same level. Doesn't it, you know it? I use the peg head as my gauge, and I kind of parallel the peg head in most cases. You know, if you're working on one of those uh, German guitars with the flat peg head, you can't do that. But, but typically, I use that as my angle to file the nut. And the trick of that is you don't want this. You don't want it rocking. You want this to stay in that one plane and keep it in that one plane. And the reason for that is, is you want the string to touch at the, where it comes off the back of the nut here or the inside of the nut, whatever you want to call that. You want that to be the last place the string touches. If you're rocking it, then it's going to be high in the middle and you're going to be touching in the middle. And then you're going to be hearing that weird buzz and wondering where it comes from. I'm going to call that good enough for the moment. Uh, what are these other, what are the small strings? What's this small string here? That's you a said 13. A 13. Yeah. So we've got a 16 here. That should be sufficient. Okay. Yep. And what's this? It's the same. It's 13. Yep. Okay. And what are these? Those are, the, the outside ones are 13s, by the way. Okay. Yeah. And then the next one in is 20. All right, so what, what I do at this point is now these are still filed high, I'm 99% sure. Uh, what I like to do now is get the strings on it. Now, ordinarily, that's fairly easy. On this uh, contraption, we have a different issue, and that is that he wants these strings, uh, you know, uh, he wants the pairs set in the saddle because otherwise they're too wide, they're too far apart. And that's just by the nature of these holes and things. And, you know, in hindsight, perhaps we could have drilled those holes a little different, you know, in hindsight. Yeah, <laughs> it, would, it would have been it would have been a probably a good idea to have shifted this back pair of holes that way just a hair. It's it's really uh, you're dealing with something that I'm not terribly familiar with here. We'll just do what we have to to make it work. We'll make it work one way or the other. Okay, in my classic hurry up and screw up, I didn't screw up actually, but I got ahead of myself. Uh, we do need to uh, redrill and chamfer these holes, um, so we've got to do all that yet. I uh, was looking at uh, these pins here and I was kind of having withdrawals because they don't match and whenever they don't match I start you know cringing and you know sh just start twitching all over you know. So we went over and we found some that match except that they don't match these holes yet but that's okay. They will by the time we're done and uh, that's the next step. Well, for the most part, these holes are going to line up, so we shouldn't have any real problem. Uh, we, can, we know we were all the way straight through. It's just now that we have to clean out the glue and, and, and just enlarge our holes on the top here because they're not big enough. And So I've got a um, uh, 1364, I think is what I have here, if that means anything to you. And the drill will just more or less find its way through there. What, the only thing I'm concerned about, and it, it's a real concern, is that it can chip out between these holes. Because these are so many holes, and when you start drilling, you know, nature takes its course and it can grab a piece of that wood and just chip it out. And I'm just hoping that doesn't happen. So, so far so good. I'll drill half and I'll let Kim drill half. I'm, I'm going to get out while the getting's good. Here you go, Kim. <laughs> Challenge set. <laughs> just start it slow and just keep it straight as you can keep it there. And just be sure you don't drill through the back. <laughs> I think we got lucky, 
And it's a real thing that that can chip out, trust me. Uh, ask me how I know that. Okay, I think, and, and, I, and this is just a guess, that these holes are big enough that we can ream. To be truthful, I don't know if they are. Um, you know, it's, it looks like they're just big enough. And the problem with this is I can't get my finger in there now. Uh, barely. I'm, I'm probably the only one here that can do that. <laughs> I think I can reach that back hole. I think I can. Yeah, I think I can. And there I just, I just felt the end of it right there. Wow. I mean, if it were not for uh, nine inch long fingers, I wouldn't be able to uh, reach back there. Just barely can reach it. And I, as soon as I feel the tip, I stop. That usually makes the hole just right. Now the problem is I got them dead gum wires in my way. Dang electrified kids anyway. Yeah. Ah, I'm not sure I can feel that one. It's so hard to get to. Yep, I think I went a little deeper on that one. It's hard to tell where the hole is. Okay, so we have those reamed. Now my guess is that these will fit there. They do. Look at that. They just fit just nice. That's just about perfect. Actually, that one don't have a black <laughs> dot on oh, no. how did we? How did we do that? There's one more over there with that little dot. Yeah, if you'll I'll probably have to go get that then. Somehow or another, I must have picked up the wrong one. Okay, now we're gonna need to try to chamfer these holes a little bit. Okay, I've got my little uh, step drill here. Uh, by the way, someone mentioned that whenever you use a step drill like this, you definitely don't want the spiraled one. And they, they have a spiraled step drill that would dig in much faster. This doesn't dig in. This type here works pretty good for this, or at least it always has. I, I'll be honest, I haven't used it in anything with holes this close. I'm just hoping it's going to work. That looks pretty good. It, it opened them up just a little bit. It didn't do much, but you know, at least it makes them kind of nice. I'm gonna take a little bit of sandpaper here and go over those holes because there's a little bit of fuzzies on the tops of the holes now. Since we're about to string this up, I'm gonna go ahead and clean up this bridge a little bit from all the clamping and glue and all that stuff. So I'll go ahead and sand the whole thing just a little bit. The oil we can use, we, we could use a boiled linseed oil which would be perfectly fine or we'll just go ahead and use this since it's handy in a little tiny bottle. And this is Be Good Oil. This is kind of in lieu of a finish. Uh, when you have raw wood, it's always nice to put something on the raw wood rather than putting a lacquer or something like that over it. You can put this oil on it and that kind of, you know, helps the wood a little bit in terms of uh, moisture retention, I guess, and maybe uh, just keeps it from drying out too much and makes it look nice too. Pretty much, once you get it on there, you just wipe it right back off. And now we have a bridge that looks like a store-bought bridge, except better. Well, let's start putting strings on. Um, we won't show you that part unless uh, we run into something unusual. <laughs> okay, we've got the strings on this thing, and uh, you know we just have to start the adjustments on it now. First thing I'm looking at is to see, uh, you know, does it look like they're paired up pretty well? And they're not bad. I mean, I, you know, you you could argue that maybe you could do a little bit to it, but but the pairing looks pretty good. Maybe this one could come just a hair that way. I'm just looking at it that way, um, but not not bad. Height wise, it's of course crazy high, but but you know you. If you're setting up an instrument for the first time, you really should make it high. You know, if you make it low, you're, <laughs> you've just got to start over. We're crazy high at this end, so we're going to work on this end first. Get it, you know, reasonably close, and then we'll work on the saddle end. I always get out my uh, thin pick, um, and, uh, you know, everybody can do this different, but I use just a real thin pick to set my... Uh, 
get, uh, strings with at the first fret. These thin picks are about 16, 17, 18 thousandths, depends on which one you have. Typically, uh, you know, on the bigger strings, I want them to just lift the string. Just barely, uh, well, actually, just snug to barely lift. And we've got a long way to go here. We can put three or four picks in here, so we're, we're way off. But that's to be expected. Again, I'm gonna keep my angle the same, and I'm just gonna file way down. And I get down here and I look at it to see where we're at, because I can, I can kind of tell by eye if we're close. My last words on earth will be spoke with you in mind. And I'll talk about our good life, how your life enriched mine. Most of all, I want to say you've been good to me. I'm going to leave it a little loose for the moment because we're going to work on the saddle end and we may need to do quite a bit there too. And I don't want to get this too low up here. So for the, for the first draft of this, I'm just going to leave this a little loose. So what I'm doing here, because I think th this string could move just a teeny bit towards the base, I'm also filing it at a very slight angle. It's going to be just thousands. It's not much. I hope you're there to hear my last words on earth. Please be there to hear my last words on earth. I'm going to do the rough out on this and get it kind of close and then I'll let Kim do most of the detail. That's that's close enough for right now. I mean, I you know, I just don't want to get it tight yet. Now, because we've cut these slots so much deeper, um, we're going to have to take a lot off the top of this nut. Now, we could wait and do it at the end, but sometimes I just do it as I go and it seems to work out pretty well that way too. So, Maybe we'll do a kind of a combination of that this time. I'm going to take both of those strings off and I'm going to take a file here and I'm going to choke up on the file where I'm just using the tip of it. I'm just going to go ahead and start knocking it down because we know we've got to cut way off of here. I put my thumb in front of the file here so that I'm bumping into it rather than hitting the top of his veneer there. We can stop there for right now. That's good enough for the moment. Still going to need to remove some wood, but, but you know, I mean some uh, of the bone there, but we're, we're good enough. I'm just trying to get them, uh, you know, keep them under tension a little bit because uh, as you go, that can affect the height of everything. So if you keep your tension about the same, then your height's going to work out much better. So we're quite high on the rest of them too. <laughs> Where'd the pick go? There it is. There's always something hiding. The important thing right now is not to get this too low. You, you just want it. You, you just want it on the high side of where you where you actually want it. So you just want it a little bit high. And the reason for that is because you're going to adjust the saddle yet. I think I can go down a little bit more safely and then we'll work on the next one. Yeah, I think that's good for right now. You can see my process. I'm not going to film any more of this until we get to the some more detail. But basically right now we're just dropping everything down to an approximate level. We got the nut set, you know, pretty close, but it's high. There's no question it's still high. Maybe, you know, one and a half times the height that it should be. So it's about a half, half of an adjustment up. Uh, in other words, if you wanted it set at uh, 18 thousandths, it's probably, uh, you know, 27 thousandths or something. That's just to give you an idea. It's, it's about half again higher than it should be. Um, because we were trying to err on the cautious side here because we don't want to have to do the nut again. We don't want to cut it too low. 
we checked here and we were high here. Uh, we were 115 on the base side and, and 95 on the treble. And we're going to shoot for around 70 and 60. Uh, at least that's going to be our first shot to see where we're at. Anyway, the bottom line is we've calculated now with all those numbers and we've decided we need to take 90 thousandths off of the, off the base side of the, of the uh, saddle and we need to take about 70 thousandths off of the treble side of the saddle. I've shown how I do this before, but the easiest way is to just put a little mark here and a little mark here down where you can't see it. It's going to be down in the slot. And then you set your calipers <laughs> to the numbers that you want. Um, this is the base side here. So we want to take off 90 thousandths on the base side and we'll set the calipers to 90 thousandths. There's 90 and a half and we'll call that good enough. And then you just scratch across there and that I'm just verifying that that is the base side. And then we want to drop it down to 70 for the treble side. And that's about as accurate as you can do on these things. So we'll just run this over to the sander, slide it right into the sander and cut it right to those lines. Okay, we're strung back up after having knocked that uh, saddle down quite a bit. And we're going to just look at it now and see how close we are. Hand me those glasses over there for me. Thank you. We're going to uh, check it here at the 12th fret first. I think we're really close. Yeah. We're 70, 75, somewhere in there, and we're about 60-ish. And to me, for an instrument with this scale length, that's probably pretty close. I mean, I don't know. Everybody's different, but, you know, you can get them too low. We didn't change up here too much, I'll be honest. Uh, we erred on the, on the cautious side. By bringing this down, we're going to still bring this down half of this too. So we got this quite a bit to come down. So we're going to be pretty low when we're done here. Um, so I think we're going to be really close to where we want to be once we get the nut adjusted. Now the good news is I think we're in good shape. The bad news is he's got to adjust this part. <laughs> <laughs> so he's going to find out just how much fun it is to adjust it a, nut, a nut down to the uh, final detail. We're really pretty close on the G's and we're not terribly far off on the D's, but we do have quite a bit on the E's and the A's. So we've got some work to do. We'll turn the camera on maybe and show you a little bit of that, uh, but we're going to let uh, Kim get his uh, feet wet here, jumping in. Well, my friends, we're going to pick a little tune together here. And uh, I already told Kim, I warned him that he has to come down to my level. <laughs> you know to play. <laughs> <laughs> Just like I did with my uh, luthier skills, huh? Why'd you come down to me? <laughs>
like I said, he had to come down to my level a lot, <laughs> except that he never did. <laughs> he cheated me. He really did. I hope you enjoyed that. He is That's quite nice. a picker. Well, my friends, it was a tough fight. We had a few little <laughs> whoopties off camera, but we got it, got it worked out, and it's set up pretty darn well, I yeah, think. Looks great. Uh, everything looks, looks good, feels good. I'll tell you what, having Kim here has been a treat for me because I really have heard some really fine music. I hope you uh, enjoyed this last tune he's going to play on his bazooki. enjoyed this. Thanks for watching and tell your friends.